Eric and I met through having uh, a I don't know, like a dozen different people, especially Benny, all Ooh, say Benny. we had to meet each other, and you you have to have this conversation with one another. And when you have that kind of like uh, pretense and getting to know someone that you already kind of look at and you respect, admire, uh, it, it it builds this like strange, odd tension right out of the gate. But we went to a bright moments event, which is beautiful. And we popped into a bar after, and Rachel and I, or excuse me. Talking about you like you're my wife. Uh, Eric, Eric and I uh, lost ourselves three hours later in one of the craziest first conversations I've ever had with anyone, uh, which was mostly born from uh, the beginning trickles of what I had been doing in the space were beginning to roll. They, this momentum was starting to stack in my life. And seeing someone way further along, who had watched uh, his initial creation turn into a wild, fractalized labyrinth of people that are now all connected to squiggles and art blocks and every artist who has released something on art blocks. I wanted to know uh, what comes next. Like, what, what is the chaotic moment that I'm about to bump into, even on a very small level and capacity, feel like? because my last year I've been trying to move at the glacial space pace of trying to understand every little bit of what's happening to me so that I can actually try to grow my practice, what I want to say to the world, uh, without, uh, let's say, immediately creating an open edition of 20,000 and then watching people discard and dispose it and then I would never be able to release art again and gradually trickle, grow, form deep connections with the collectors and friends and artists along the way. And that slowness, it gives you time to think. But you, you just went straight into madness. And so what advice do you have for me once the chaos, the momentum, is now almost out of your control? Ooh, uh, well, I mean, there's a, uh, I was telling him earlier, like, uh, I, um, the grass is always greener in, in many ways, and I've, I've really kind of appreciated watching Sam's um, way of engaging as a, like, almost a, like from a jealousy perspective. Like, the fact that he can work and in his passionate space of art and, and dialogue with a small group of people and be able to give himself to a small group of people in such a meaningful way. It's something that... Uh, it's hard for me personally not being able to do that, and I feel lucky that I've I've been able to make some friendships along the way that have usually uh, starts at one or two in the morning. Uh, I feel like that's the only way that it's actually happened. Our conversations usually start at midnight, maybe one, and end at three or four in the morning, and that's when that's when it like really comes out. Um, and I remember one conversation specifically. He looked at me and he's like, "What do you want?" Like, what do, you, what do you want out of this? And it was the first time anybody had asked me that, or, or at least at that sentimental level. But um, that uh, relationship that you can build by building this thing that draws so much passion out of others is something that um, I didn't set out to do, but I realized as this thing was growing and expanding that um, – was happening pretty organically and in that conversation when he's like what do you want i was like i think there's something bigger here like i think you know of course it's amazing to be in this space and to get to be an artist and to get to work with so many artists and so many collectors but i started to recognize maybe like a year ago that um the space while hiding behind a pfp allows you to maybe do some stuff that you wouldn't do as a human in person um because it's bad or could be construed as negative uh, hiding behind a PFP also allows you to be maybe a better person than you would feel comfortable being in public. Because, um, you know, society has kind of trained us to be more closed and guarded. And uh, what I've experienced is a lot of people that might have started as gamblers, gamers, sneakerheads, uh, turn into like passionate collectors of art. And it's okay that a lot of them still. Um, want to make money. I think that's totally fine, and I feel like that happens in the traditional art world very much as well, and we shouldn't have like a high standard uh, there or a specific standard, but um, it started to materialize to me that there's like this higher 
calling for what we're doing to like help humans just be themselves. And I feel like I don't know in my entire life if I've seen a more exceptional example of that than uh, what Sam did with the Monument Game and the observations uh, as a very uh, grateful holder of a, of a School of Lucy. Um, thanks, Adam. Um, I got to read them all. And I, you know, I remember there's like a lot of them. And um, in some ways, it's like you're reading them and you're just like, like you read five and ten, and they take a little while to read because they're deep. You can't, you can't just scan. You cannot peruse the observations. Like you actually have to get into them. And some of them made me emotional. And I, I was on an airplane when I was reading them, and I was like, uh, like I was sorry. People were like, "What's wrong with that guy?" But um, I just they kept going on and on and on. And I was just completely blown away at the humanity that was coming from this group of what started as oftentimes is gamblers and gamers and sneakerheads, and it just completely blew my mind. Like. Yes, I knew we have it in us as humans to be good people and to like really be introspective. But what I was watching as I was reading that was just something that was completely unbelievable. And um, you brought that out from people. And you've then managed to maintain that relationship in a way that I think is spectacular. And so, you know, obviously, as you grow the number of people you interact with, there is a human limitation to the amount of, that you can give to each person. Um, and I think that's something to be conscious of. You know, like uh, when I created the Chromie Squiggle, I created an edition of 10,000 thinking that I just wanted an edition size that everybody could have one, like that they would never run out, you know, that would always be available for people. Um, I didn't factor in, A, the fact that anybody would give a shit about the project, and B, the fact that like there was going to be a finite number of minutes or seconds that I was going to be able to spend with each of the people that support my work. And... Um, one of the things we were talking about in the green room a second ago is just thinking about, you know, as an artist, and I'm talking too much here, but in the generative art space, you know, we kind of, uh, especially curating an art blocks project, we think about what the algorithm is capable of generating in terms of number of outputs while still remaining compelling. And it's such an acutely technical thing, but it's also artistic. Uh, and what we don't think about, or I haven't started thinking about it until a year ago, is how many outputs the artist is capable of maintaining a deep and sincere and authentic relationship with the people that collect the work. And to me, to you, to any artist that's out there, when thinking about releasing things, I think thinking about both what the variety of the work is capable of, whether it's photography, whether it's generative art, whether it's whatever, um, that's important. But then also thinking about like, hey, if this does get you to where you want to be in terms of a relationship with other human beings, what is the capacity that you have to engage with the people that have it? Because for me, it's beyond my capacity. And it's one of my like, biggest frustrations is that I don't get to engage deeply with every single person. It's like, um, and so just being cautious of that and being considerate of that, especially as you, know, you grow your practice. And um, yeah, it's... This was, I think, one of the things that was stickiest in those early conversations is you, you almost warned me as some of my collections started snowballing in value of, oh, this feels too fast. You, you, this, there's something, I, I remember this, and you, sh and you shared your experience of watching uh, Chromie Swiggles uh, begin from this very accessible and open and, and, and generous and empathetic-minded place, something fun and sweet and communal, and it, it, it enters into the living and breathing organism that is a market, and, and especially at a very frenetic time, and it exploded. And with uh, uh, an explosion uh, is violence in, in both the upward trajectory and then back down, and then the process of what do you, what do, you do as you rebuild? And uh, that stuck with me of if I were to design this monument game and I'm going to spend time to create a very large and elaborate work that's filled with my heart, my story, my belief system, thousands of little vignettes scattered throughout it, something that is fairly nostalgic as far as a painting technique at face value of a static image, but to use a almost a crude tool of a written observation of people being able to take a year-long exertion of my life and it not just be something that is scrolled past, 
but to actually engage in this market, this living and breathing undulating organism, and respect it a little bit, acknowledge that I have to meet people where they are, that an incentive structure to demand people to slow down and spend time in that exertion both needs to be from the artistic endeavor put into it, but also thinking about the actual mechanics of how the people touch it. Why would they bother to slow down and come in and be in there? And so the, the skulls of Lucy, the number of council members in the house tonight, happy to have you guys here. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to not just view as like, you came in early, I, you, you were a part of me, but uh, I'm on to the next thing. And I wanted to instead treat it as, I'm not gonna send you any free shit here, but I would love if you would partake in my attempt to spread my biggest failure out into a piece of work. My biggest failure is I spent a good chunk of my life not paying attention. I was doing commercial art for about 10 years. I had a perfectly fine, good, respectable career, one that even people patted me on the back for. Uh, but I spent 10 years uh, in a hole, alone, like absolutely atomized and removed from pretty much everyone, hyper-focused on honing one specific craft. And in the meantime, I built the most fragile friendships possible, the most fragile relationships possible, the most fragile family relationships possible. All of my art was actually the facades, the album covers, movie posters, the front face, pretty cover of real art. And while I was in it, I was not aware of any of that. I, I just was humming along. I, I was, could feel the smoothness of it, but I could also feel a clientless rack up a little bit, a bank account rack up a little bit, and it felt fine. And then the moment, a violent moment in life, came crashing down in those relationships, those friendships, and subsequently my entire lens on my own art fell apart too, then became a journey of, wow, every single question I have ever had in life has been asked and answered for thousands of years, and I fucked up. Like, it is entirely on me. This is no one's fault. I was looking for blame. It's like, oh, it's got to be my dad's fault, of course. It's got to be maybe my brother, my ex. Some, someone did this to me, surely. But, you know, you, you sit in your own muck, and you will eventually see you got to find your way out of it. And as I entered the space, my connection with collectors has largely been seeing that my story, which once felt very emotional, very personal, very special, that, that I had a, a unique form of pain was like laughable. And, and the more people I shared it with, the more I realized how much we rhyme with each other. And that especially when you participate in the market, that, that organism, you really feel those rhythms and rhymes amongst each other. And so Lucy, the, my story is basically a quest, a pursuit of, uh, I missed it. I did it wrong and I'm gonna try to piece it back together one bit by one bit, and I found, generally speaking, through meeting you, Adam, Benny, Joey, all, is all of these people start filling in my blind spots, and that loneliness, that atomization, that safe place of smooth comfort that we all kind of like lull ourselves to death in, that the moment you actually connect to the network, and then you start reducing the space between each element within it, you grow, but what grows out from you becomes even crazier. And that's what I've witnessed firsthand going to Marfa to see, even though maybe what I've done is only a few hundred people, and now there's tens of thousands of people connected to you, probably hundreds of thousands in some branching paths here, is I don't think I, I, I go to that place and I see, uh, you know, 100,000 people looking at you like daddy god, uh, bowing to, to Snowfro, how, how, how to, uh, please touch me, please grace me with your swiggle oh greatness. <laughs> you know, what, what, what I see is I see you fundamentally put out an exertion that came from the best possible place. It, it just, it objectively, it is an undeniable thing that everyone that knows you knows this. You mean the best, you want the best out of other people, Nothing could possibly bring you more joy than watching 
the potential that everyone holds inside themselves actually be unlocked by them getting out of their own way. And if you bring them all into a place, that 10,000 doesn't need to all point at you. They actually begin just shuffling in the, in the right organism, the right little zone together. I appreciate that. Yeah. The, the last few years have just been, yeah, chaos. I think we we're going to call this chaos, this conversation of chaos. It's been nothing but chaos. I mean, um, and uh, on that note, I mean, I just have to like shout out our families and our wives that have kind of <laughs> made this possible because it's just been, you know, like without that support, like it's just, uh, it's really hard to explain um, how chaotic life has been. But uh, yeah, it's been chaos and it's also been incredibly rewarding and watching uh, people that I've meet come out of their shell into being, I think, just more authentic and more genuine individuals. And like, I guess what you said about Marfa, I feel like there's a, desire or propensity for those people maybe to kind of infect others with that. Uh, and that feels scalable. And I think that's the thing that I'm having the hardest time with is scaling uh, personally my ability to uh, impact people. Because I do feel, I mean, I've never felt so close to being totally burnt out in my life. Like, I mean, this is, uh, and it just doesn't look like it gets any slower. And, um, but there's that bright side of things that, you know, there's a scalability there. And I think same with you, like as you kind of, you know, your career expands and like you get into maybe bigger things, you can also, each of those people, I mean, I just want to shout out to the people that left the observations. I am truly blown away by the quality of what I read. And um, I, I, I would like to think that there's a non-zero chance that each of those people is now more likely to spread that kind of sense of like openness and genuineness to other people. And there's something about this technology that facilitates it. And, you know, I've said to people often that when I set off to create our blocks, I, I had been in this space for three years and watched square peg round hole after square, square peg round hole of like use cases of the technology. And I swore to myself that I would never put something out there that did not need the technology to survive or to exist. And, Generative art has existed for a really long time. Um, but this interconnected nature and the thing that this has unlocked, whether it's with the observations, whether it's like just the genuine relationships with like uh, art blocks and like this community, to me feels like a true and unique use case for this technology that is just so powerful. And we're very lucky to be here to experience it at this level. Um, you know, I, I hear this so much and it's so true, like in what other world do we get to interact with the people that we're with all the time? We're accessible and maybe that's not sustainable either, but I try to make myself as accessible as possible and I know that Sam is as well. Um, this technology facilitates that and it's weird because it's technology and it's grungy, dirty tech. It's not like lovey-feely, but like it is allowing, it is enabling people to be uh, uh, just more human, and I think it's uncovering a side of us that I think our world desperately needs. Uh, yes, we have a lot of divisiveness in our ecosystem, uh, a lot of dogma, a lot of hubris, um, and I think we can be better as a whole. I think I can be better, but um, I do think it's it's unlocking something, and I think that we're kind of here experiencing that in in, in different ways. I think like the center, the sum of what I've done is tiny interactions with a ton of people. You have had very deep interactions with a smaller number of people, but like the sums of that are very similar. And I don't know that we could have more different pasts in some ways, but I don't think that we could also have more similar pasts in other ways. And that's why we're here, I think, talking about this, because when you look at like, you know, the, the fine craft of his painting and, you know, the uh, Lucy, and then you see like bright rainbow, colorful, squiggly lines. Like there is no actual greater juxtaposition, uh, you know. <laughs> no, but it's there. Difference between it's, it's there, man. Uh, the work, you know, it's it's, it's there because at, at its core, you know, I, I, I'm a classically trained oil painter. I've been digitally painting for now 12 to 15 years. I translated into 
the Monument game, which is this 30,000 pixel sprawl a year of my life. But while I'm making it, I, it's like impossible not to feel uh, the museums are full of paintings. Like this, it's a very old, maybe even overly nostalgic concept. And so the, the, the system around the Monument game was a communal one. It was a, it would cook, is a communal digital varnish where this actually is only the image and the image is the least essential part of the art. It's required to gather people around a fire, but I think the social structure that runs through Squiggles and subsequently what has run through on top of the monument game is rooted in the exact same goop. Like we're, we're coming at this from a very similar place where uh, most of those people, I never had a conversation with once, but I feel like I know them. Uh, I have skipped so many layers of nonsense, uh, pleasantries of conversation with all 256 players where they know me pretty well. They, they have come very close to the worst bits of me and the best bits of me because they're all in there. And by extension, what they left behind, for many of them, we had, I got to see like a time scale of people, how, how people view time, where anyone could go to a museum, they could say what they think about a piece of art. They could even write it down on a piece of paper, but the paper can get burnt, lost, get water on it. You could write it on a computer, you could journal it, you could forget about it, file gets corrupted, computer goes away. But on chain, barring a 51% attack, every single one of these people are with me forever. Exactly at the coordinates that they placed it and the words that they said, even their typos. And in this, in this little section of 256 people, I got to experience like a jungle of humanity that, that I think you, you and I really talk about at, at length, which is we're, it's a lot of different types of guys. You know, you got the people that have come in here and they have shared their deepest and darkest, most personal traumas. They have said that, that this is my place to put pain on top of your pain. And we're going to link and connect through that. There's people who view the longevity of it. I want to leave a note to my future child or my child that was just born. Or I want to reach into the past and I want to leave a note to someone that died, that has left my life. And then you got people leaving jokes vandalism, people that kind of look like they fed my poems through chat GPT with the exact <laughs> character count and put it right back thinking like, oh, he just wants to see himself, which is like the last thing anyone could ever possibly want is having all of my worst qualities reflected back at me. And, uh, but I, you get them all. And then you also get what you have had to experience at such a massive scale, which is all right, you've come into the art, you've participated, we have bonded at that level, but now the market is here. And now there's a whole, whole form of behavior that is taking place that is not written word, it's not brush strokes, it is transactions, it is energy shifting and moving across the organism. And we got to see a jungle of behavior. We got to see the true believers, the people that threw their all into this, that, that really meant it, that cared, that found each other, that started groups and conversations with one another. Some just saw it as a good long-term investment, some short-term investment, some saw me as entirely discardable and disposable. And watching something that for my larger pieces are kind of vaulted away probably for a good long while, they don't move very often. It is a personal connection that I formed very deeply with pretty much every single one of my collectors. Here, it's larger, and by extension, there's a little bit more space. And in that space, what I think in the past I would view as maybe with some judgment of, how dare you, I made this, you're going to get rid of it? I, instead, I, you quickly come to terms with the jungle needs the whole ecosystem. You know, like when you look up at the, at the sky in a, in a rainforest, you see the canopy, it's mostly dark. But every now and then, the vines creep up it, and occasionally, they'll wrap around and strangle one, and they'll pull it down, and the light will come in through, and then the jungle goes to work. And it is a race, predator, prey, every flora and fauna, parasite, 
fungi all trying to head towards that light and they work up into this spire to try to replace that and the dominant tree, the dominant thing will occupy that space. And so what once was met with judgment for me of the discardable or disposable of how they would treat my work, I instead see as this is the human engine, the fertilizer that makes us run. And if I, if I only have people that are as uh, emotionally existential and lost in thought as I am, I am going to be in my own hell forever. And I need people to teach me lessons in ways that I am not attached to. But I have to get that. And this network, this, this, this group, this world, this space I found myself in that I think you have been my greatest guide in showing me how to take that human chaotic behavior with some grace. We need it all. And uh, you really can't get rid of it. <laughs> I think there's, there's something here too also in the, in the, in the dichotomy of how... I mean, my my goal um, at this point is uh, for everybody here to thrive. Like, I feel like I've, in some ways, this has kind of consumed my life and made it very difficult, but also it's been beautiful. I'm doing my favorite thing in the world and interacting on my favorite subject. This is my passion turned into my job. Uh, and I want that for everybody here. And... Um, at the expense of like me thriving at this point, because I feel like I've lost track. Like I've completely lost, gotten lost in this. And somehow you have spent a lot of time helping me understand how I can thrive again, and and helping me understand like what my like put words to these by asking some pretty hard questions, man. Like put words to what drives me, what makes me excited, and uh, while. Uh, yeah, there's just something really incredible that like there's like you know I don't know if I hadn't have met you have Benny there's a whole bunch of people here that text me when I'm having like a rough day you could tell when I'm having a rough day on Twitter and there's people that just randomly send me a text message and be like hey man like we're thinking about you and we appreciate you and those things go a long way just because it's just like so overwhelming sometimes and um, but that combination of things has helped me realize how I can thrive and how I can kind of get back into um, enjoying a little bit more of this and i feel like that helps me then give more because it gets to this point where i can't there's just nothing left you know and i feel like we've all experienced this at some point in our lives where there's just like there's just nothing left and uh you and and many of the people in this room have really kind of helped get me back to that point and i'm infinitely grateful for that thanks man i look you you embody i think a a very difficult thing to find when i look at uh let's say, many collections in our space of digital art, these large, sprawling bodies, uh, there is a language around them of inclusiveness, of openness. This is for everyone. Everyone can come on board. Everyone can have a little piece. And as time has stretched out and you watch these things actually unfold, actually probably some of the most insidious things that have ever unfolded within our ecosystem has taken place masked and guised under that openness. And so when thinking about creating something that relative to what you do is, let's say, more exclusive, there are a smaller number of people, there is a, a price point that is less accessible, that my intent is I want anyone that comes in to really, 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 really fucking mean it and understand that Every bit of energy they give me, I am going to take with as much grace as I know how to take it. And the only way I can actually honor that is not by putting you into a loop of giving you things constantly uh, or, or here's what's next. There's something good coming down the way. I promise, I promise, I swear to God is the, the Lucy path, the entire purpose of this is I started off fucking up. I'm going to piece myself bit by bit back together because clearly all the books that everyone had written that are meant to prevent you from stumbling quite so hard, maybe if you chart it along the way, people can start unspooling that thing in themselves. And when you look at someone that is exceptional, like deified even in the space, like yourself, with as much as you have on your shoulders, I think the conversation we had that really, really just changed my whole outlook on whatever time scale I'm going to point to next was centered around 
dodging bullets of kindness. People that want to help, that their help is hard to discern whether their motivation is to back what you do because they see your heart and they want to resonate it and amplify it and put energy to stack and multiply that, put more of that in the world, or if they see that and they want to see how much they can take from it. Figuring out what anyone wants from us while we're trying to make things uh, is an endless and terrifying bad trip loop that uh, I have found myself in many, many, many times. But without the space, I'm alone, I'm in my room, and I'm focused on my art and nothing else. I have not had anyone outside of my expertise poke those parts of my brain to show me that they're not out to get us. They want to see what we are capable of. And every friendship that we tend to form here is you invest the time in the people that you think want it the most and that are leaving one little bit on the table. And so to speak with someone exceptional like you, as many times we had, is how do you look at like fucking Eric Snowfro and say, you can be better. How can I, from my vantage point, say that? It's, it's, it's pretty difficult, I will admit. You're a good guy. But that I got notes. And, 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 our, and, our, <laughs> and our, our entire point of, I think, our, our, our friendship is the exchange of those notes. I have a, my friend Joey is here, and we, we often say that like, uh, the, the, the great sign of a friendship, the best artistic business partner you could ever possibly have is someone who will rip you a new asshole, who will, who will tell you, Sam, Lucy sucks. This one doesn't hit. It, it is, you, you missed the mark. The thing that you felt, I know what you're trying to say, it isn't present here. Try again. And hearing that and knowing that the person saying it to me, there's no malice in this. This is actually a greater form of belief than anyone has ever, ever put in my direction to bother to be honest with me so that I rip and tear and grow. I agree, man. And uh, shout out, I think, to Pixel Pete. I know he's not here. He's back in Houston. But he's been someone in my life that has, I mean, what you see of our blocks today is probably very much based on just his feedback. Uh, I like to tell people that he, he had an email address at rblocks, Pete at rblocks, that I owe in 2018. And we'd get together on Thursdays and have beers and talk about this. And yeah, the feedback was very direct and very honest and very much like no one's, you know, no one's going to care about this based on what I was explaining. And it made me go back and refine, fix it to where it was a compelling thing. And even still, it was obviously kind of a stretch. But um, yeah, having those people in your life, I think is really important. And I encourage everyone to find those people in their lives. I think, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to find those people. And uh, yeah, no, I, I very much appreciate that from you and uh, from a lot of the folks that are here today. It's, uh, it's really special. And uh, we should find the best that we can in, in each other. I feel like there's so much, there's so much good here. Um, there's so much powerful, powerful good here. And I think that we uh, just need to try to find it and find it for ourselves and, and help spread it so that, you know, um, uh, we can grow the space, not just from a speculative perspective, although that's perfectly fine. I, in, in April, I got to do a uh, panel uh, talking about creator royalties. And, um, you know, I, a lot of this was like this realization, and you kind of touched on this earlier, like this realization, yeah, that everybody belongs here. Like you shouldn't criticize anybody for the, Everyone's welcome to operate however they want to operate. Um, and some people operate more aligned with what you want or believe in than others, but everyone's entitled to be here. Uh, and everybody is a part of that jungle. And that jungle doesn't really operate without that. And I think it's really, I, I love the jungle analogy because it's like we are in the jungle. And jungles are generally known by like the unknown and kind of like we don't know what's around the corner. And I sure as hell don't know what's around the corner. And I say this pretty often, but anyone that thinks or professes that they know what's coming is wrong. And you should just like assume that. Like maybe I'm professing that now, but it's kind of an infinite loop there. So maybe you're right. I don't know. But um yeah, there's, there's just something really powerful there, and there's something really powerful with this group of people here um, and within this space, and we have an opportunity to change the world, and I know that's fucking sappy, and I'm sorry, but uh, I, I feel like watching the last three years has been full of opportunities to miss opportunities, 
and we're not going to get everything right. And I've sure made my full fair share of mistakes. And, um, but like every time we're presented with an opportunity to do something better than the way that it was done before, it is our job to take that opportunity. And, um, and like that has to be how we operate in order to make this a sustainable jungle, um, for everybody to, to, to have fun. in. and I think you've done a really good job of that. And, uh, a lot of artists here have done a phenomenal job of that. And a lot of collectors here have been so supportive. And um, it's just its just nuts. Like, I mean, this is totally unbelievable. The chaos is unbelievable, but it's also incredibly fulfilling. So, yeah. It is, but slight pushback is the jungle is also absolutely indifferent to our wants, our needs, our desires. Nature gives no shits. They... <laughs> It, 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 it will happily have us be part of it and it will happily consume us uh, if, we, if we lay down and die within it. And uh, yes, there's all this great, great, positive, beautiful opportunity for it to grow, but I think that's literally impossible unless you find the, the let's say, foreign agent that has come into the jungle that is incompatible with the ecosystem and has thrown it off balance and you have to be able to create actual ideological divides of uh, if, if you can't demand or control or force it in anyone else, you at least have to make sure that whatever your contribution, your output, the one thing that you have agency over, tries to make the jungle at least pretty looking. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you want to let people ask questions or do you want to keep? Sure. I mean, I don't know. Is no, that appropriate? Not? Yeah. Six minutes. You're amazing builders of relationships. Regardless of the artwork, your, your strength is relationships. And it's something that in this space has been very underrated or people don't really understand how to do. And I just wonder, like, how do you stay true to yourself? Because both of you are very honest. Both of you are very you. And especially as an artist, I feel like people have expectations people think that you're in a certain way. And the more you grow, the more you feel like you have to change. This is a very great question. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, even, it makes me nervous because I... No, no it's, uh, it, it's great because the, the reality is I think it's the people that fill your blind spots. It's my wife, Rachel, it's Joey, it's Benny, it's Dave, it's Ryan. Like all these people here uh, that I've gotten to know through this space are, are constant checks on letting what just to be like very clear here like i paint monkeys digitally and build social fabric around it and people pay me in crypto magic money <laughs> like i am operating from the a very silly and unhinged premise of a life uh and but i i will tell you i take it very seriously to try to do it as well as i can and sometimes i take it too seriously and so i rely on the people that love me, have my best interests in heart, and also are like, don't go back there, Sam. I remember, <laughs> don't, don't touch that place. And uh, that brings it all back. It just reminds you of the monkey paintings. That's awesome. I, I would just say that um, I think everybody kind of has their own self-professed uh, superpowers, I guess. And I think one that I've identified and also realized that it's like a massive failure on my part. It's that um, I think and I'm probably butchering the numbers here, but there's like a science that says that you can develop a meaningful relationship with 100 people. That's it. And I think maybe my superpower is I can develop a meaningful relationship with like 150 people. <laughs> like I think it's actually, like I can. I do think that I can do it, but there's, um, without exaggeration, 40 emails, 30 DMs, and 20 text messages that come into my phone every single day from well over thousands of people and um yeah coming to terms with that and coming to terms with the fact that i feel like i let people down pretty regularly with my inability to respond and my, um would actually be a much better superpower to have and that's i think where i can help myself and i think that applies to a lot of the people here and if it uh doesn't already it's gonna happen because one of the things that we talk about if you know how accessible everybody is and how we can talk to our artists and our friends but like if this were to continue to grow um it doesn't sustain and uh maybe giving yourself and this is something i need to work on some grace to like not 
feel like you're letting someone down by not replying. Um, I think that's part of the in interconnected nature of this and kind of something that we can maybe all work on and, and also think about. All right, time? I think so. Thank you guys so much, Sam. I love you, dude. Love you, brother.